and welcome back to my daily every single day kind of vlog so today we are going to flip together one of the recent thrift store finds that we picked up here on the vlog who remembers this one we got it at this awesome little store do you remember that one over in Cory here in Pennsylvania and I picked up the shelf for four dollars and 99 cents it's just a wooden shelf and honestly it has those little hooks on the back of it it could go on a wall but do you know where I'm gonna put it? Right there. Cause it's time to take down the Christmas tree. And this is my art space here in my house. And I do like the idea of using this for the corner back there, but we gotta put some fun color on it cause I cannot live with this brownie frowny anymore. Let's put a pop of color into it. One of my favorite colors is Bahama Jade. This is my space. So we're, we are going to go all out. And that color of Bahama Jade, here's what it looks like. <laughs> So I'm just stirring up my stash here, getting ready to do it. And yeah, we are gonna flip it. I think your, your creative space should be a happy space. I think your home should be a happy space. But especially if you're somebody um, like me and you have lots of art supplies, you got brushes and all the good stuff around you, something like this can be great to like, you know, store your stuff into. I always say that high rises are good for storage. So when you're out junking and thrifting and you're crying, trying to create a craft room, uh, whether you're using big pieces of furniture to repurpose into something or you're getting uh, great pieces, armoires from people, china cabinets from people, to store your paint supplies all that good stuff do it do it who needs some plain jane shelving anyhow i couldn't live with plain jane shelving i'm sorry this i can live with but it's got to be in a cool color and no i'm not going to prime or sand or strip just clean your piece my favorite cleaner is of course some crud cutter and you can always get the supplies that i use the paints that i use over at junkmonkeypaint.com because I'm a shabby distressed lover. I'm just gonna do a quick one coat over this entire thing. I'm going to leave little parts of it showing through. It's gonna, a little bit of the wood is gonna show through and I like that distressed feeling. If you want full coverage, you know what? Just go ahead, be more careful when you lay down your paint to cover all the areas and maybe add a second coat as well. back the front the back and the front that says please make me pretty too I'm knocking out like the hardest part first anytime you're painting chairs and things like that that have spindles have you ever done it and do you know <laughs> you got to have a lot of patience right so we're gonna do the hard parts first and then we can come to the front because this is a nice area flat surface but it's these little spindles these little picket fence type things that you just kind of gotta make your brush fit in between. So we're getting there. Out of curiosity, do you have one project that you remember that you were flipping that you were just like, please let it be done because I have no more patience left, whether it just didn't turn out right every time you tried to do it, or it just took more time than you anticipated or it had parts that were just hard to access with your brush and it made the painting process a nightmare. Yay, well we knocked out the, bore the boring part, the part that is going to be against the wall, but we had to get it done. And now we get to focus on the stuff that you actually see, the front part. And time to roll up my sleeves because I'm going in. Couldn't tell you how many shirts I've ruined with paint. <laughs> 
Now I have pink clothes. I just devote it to painting. All right, let's do this part. got all the parts I'm just looking it over you know when you need your husband in the room telling you that darling you missed a spot well we're dry now so if I want to obviously if I wanted it to be completely full coverage I could add another layer of paint over that just making sure that all my brush lines are all connected so they fill in really nice or if you want distress you can just leave it as that but if you want a little bit more extra distressing, this is when I reach for the sand block, of course, and not the little off the edges, which that is just my personal preferred style to each their own. So one thing you have probably come to know if you use our paints is that yes, you can sand the paint. And uh, when you sand the paint, it actually goes very, very soft. So it leaves a nice polished finish to it. If you use a heavy grit, of course, you're gonna rip some of that paint off that you're working with, but just use a fine grit sand pad if you really don't wanna rip anything off, but you want that polished look. Oh, that is so pretty. Oh, I love that so much. What do you guys think? All right, let's, let's dust it off. Now, to seal or not to seal, that is the question. For me, this is going to be a utility shelf area that I'm gonna, about to push back in the corner here, put my art supplies on. We'll see how that looks in just a second. But it's up to me if I wanna seal or not. So this is gonna be a functional piece for me. I'm really not even worried about sealing it, to be totally honest with you, because I'm gonna be painting here and I know there's gonna be paint splashing on top of it, which that just gives it more character in this space here. I kinda like that idea of just leaving it raw and natural like that into my space. And at the end of the day, because I get messages, no, the paint is not going to fall off. It's on there. I had to sand it in order to get it to move. And I only painted it within 30 minutes. So you can see how well it's, it's hanging on. It's not going anywhere. So let's go ahead and put it in place. <music> closer for a quick view. I think it's perfect. I just feel like I had like some of the things that I always reach for, like my wax, my brush, my glue, my palette knives, a couple of my favorite brushes nearby. You can stock yours with anything that you tend to grab for. And if you're somebody out there that does other types of arts or you're into other types of creativity, like paper arts or beads or anything like that, know that getting out to the thrift store and bringing home some brownie frowny pieces can add a pop of happy color to your space but also be quite functional, whatever you got the store in there. So who else agrees that when you bring something new into your space or you make a small change like this, or you put up you know, just a pop of a happy color into a space, somehow it gives you a second win, a little bit of surge of energy that makes you want to clean and tidy and organize and just make your entire space happy. That's how I'm feeling right now. So I may continue with the cleaning and organizing of this space that um, my art room that I love to be in. All right guys, see you again tomorrow. Take care and do something that makes you happy today. Bye.